Good morning. This is Sue O'Hanlon, and I am here to bring you the refresh for Wednesday, June 12th. So I was asking the Lord what I should share today, and a few different things came through my mind. But I thought about our kids going to camp this week, and the Lord brought up some thoughts that I'd really like to share. So back to Sunday, if you were in church, Chung read the scripture, and when he got to 29, Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, this is one of my very favorite scriptures, and it's one of mine, and I want to read it right now. It said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, and then it goes on. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. That is such a promising scripture to me. But I have a question for you to think about. Did you ever contemplate the fact that Jesus, God, had plans for you before you were even born? Before you were born, he had plans for you. Psalm 139 is really clear that he creates us in our mother's womb. So he must have thought of us before that. But I, in my life, once I came to Christ, uh, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, but I felt like I was an orphan in the church. I didn't have those who'd gone before that I knew of that knew Jesus. Um, my family uh, apparently had a, a church era before I was born or when I was very small. I didn't even know of that until my brother just shared that with me a, a couple of years ago. I was pretty caught off guard by that. Like We went to church. I do remember one time going to church, five years old, probably six because I could read a little. I had on a little party dress and I had my little Bible white Bible with the red letters and they let me read from it and I thought that was really cool that was my church experience and then maybe twice on Easter my grandmother and I went and that was my church experience that I knew of um, I remember as a little girl telling my mom one day we would pray to God um, God bless mom and dad and all that you know and then my my dad had uh, had been an alcoholic or was an alcoholic and and became sober and when I was about eight. So we had an understanding of higher power perhaps, but not Jesus. We didn't know Jesus. Um, I remember telling my mom, I figured it out. I know who the first person was. She said, who? And I said, Jesus. And she said, oh no, there were people before him, which I had been totally unaware of. She, I think at that point, apparently she had been raised with some church, so she probably realized how negligent she'd been in that. But that's my church, That's that was what I brought when I came to Jesus. And then in about eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, this friend Janice befriended me and started talking about God. And I remember saying, why don't you guys come to church? And it was like, oh, why would we? That's a good day to sleep in. And somebody else told what they did, but my family all slept in. And Eventually, she got me to come to church, but I didn't have a ride, and I lived in Pleasant Hill. She lived in Lafayette, and the church was in Walnut Creek. Those are probably, I don't know, 10 miles apart in each direction, like a triangle. They would come with their whole family, and they would pick me up, wait in my driveway for me to be ready, and then they would take me to church and take me back every Sunday for that year of eighth grade, I think. And um, I think about the sacrifice for that family to do that, um, but they did that. And then that summer there was camp and my family didn't have a lot of money. So I said, well, I can't go to camp. And Janice's mom said, what if I let you weed in my yard and earn some money? And what if we got a scholarship from the church? So they would do that? Yeah, yeah, they might. So I filled out this paper for the church, and um, I can't remember the total amount. I think they, the scholarship was for $20, and I weeded for $20, and the whole cost was $60. So I'd use $20 from babysitting money. 
I was 14 years old, 13, 14, I guess. And um, so I, I did that. And on the little church form, it said, would you be willing to share what happens to you at camp? And I went, yeah, I'm sure nothing's going to happen to me. But I went to camp and I met Jesus and I really met Jesus. I surrendered myself to him. I confessed my sins. I asked him to come into my life and be my Lord. And um, for some people, there's an emotional experience involved. For others, they're not. It's not, and they both count. For me, there was, and it was a radical change for me. Like all of a sudden, I knew that I was loved and had a purpose. But I wanna share another verse with you. Um, Oh, before I do that, I want to tell you about some tapes, some their audio tapes that I got from my mom a few years ago after I was a believer. So I was 14 when I became a believer. Um, she shared these tapes with me, and I think that they were her mother talking about, so my, my grandmother talking about my great-grandmother. She talked about that um, she was up in the night and walked by her grandmother's room or her mother's room and she was her mother was on her knees and was praying quietly out loud and she stopped to listen she was praying for her children and their children and their children and their children she was praying they would come to know God and I realized someone had prayed for me someone had prayed for me there was a Christian lineage that got separated and I had been prayed for. But then there's these other verses I wanted to share. I know I'm probably going over my time, but this is in Ephesians 3, and this is what Paul says. I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God that's part of the plan it's not just for salvation. It's for us to get to know God and to continue to grow in him until we see him. It says when we see him, we will be like him. I'm sure he has plans for us in heaven too. The plan doesn't stop. It doesn't matter if you're an orphan in the faith like me. I Sometimes I think people look at me and they think I'm a church lady. What a crack up. I didn't even grow up in the church. <laughs> But maybe I am now. I don't know. <laughs> so, I want to say, uh, you know, my family's had, I had a lot of trauma growing up. We've had a couple of big traumas in our family, my nuclear family now. But God still has a plan. His plan doesn't stop. His plan doesn't stop. He loves us. If you're a grandma, remember, if you're praying for your kids, your grandkids, their kids. You might not see the benefit of those prayers, but it counts, keep praying. I wept when I heard those tapes. If you feel lost, remember God has a plan for you. Turn to him, turn to him and cling to him. And I wanna encourage you, pray for those kids going to camp. Pray that they will have life changing um, decisions that they'll make in this time. Pray that they'll meet Jesus in the fullness of his love and his peace for them. So I hope this has been a positive refreshment to you. Have a great Wednesday. Thanks. Bye.